You're watching Africa News Network First Fast Live. My name is Cindy Mabi. Good evening to you. Now, short term insurer MyWay is considering taking legal action against the disgruntled policyholder. MyWay believes the client faked a racist email, making it appear as if a staff member wrote it. A screenshot of an email purportedly between MyWay officials say the company will reject 90% of the claims from black people, referring to them as baboons. MyWay responded yesterday after the email went viral, calling it fake news. The company hired an independent forensic expert after an internal probe linked the email to a disgruntled client. In my way, CEO Rene Otto explained what the forensic auditor found and what they intend to do with it. And then I quote, they say, as far as we could establish in the hour or so that we've been able to look into, it was a disgruntled client who was unhappy because we couldn't pay his claim. He had email contact with us because in the process of validating the claim, we did send the emails and that's how he got a name off a of MyWay staff member. And clearly he thought the way to punish us was the way he did, end quote. And we continue. The steps that uh, we're going to take is uh, we need to follow a stronger verification process to look at the possibility of criminal charges to take the civil action against the individual involved. Meanwhile, Black First, the Land First movement has given insurance company MyWay a deadline to conclude its investigation on the alleged fake email. The Black First Land First marched to my way because they say they heard conflicting statements from the media about the company and that they are disturbed to see that my way has 100% white board of directors. The objective of the meeting today was to come here and uh, find out for ourselves as Black First Land First uh, the matter of the racism uh, claims that we saw uh, around how a, one of the employees of uh, this way, we call it this way you now, of this company, because it is still a white-owned company and we are not satisfied with uh, many things that are going on here. How uh, they are handling the issue of racism, that claim. And uh, we arrived this morning and the chief executive, uh, Otto, uh, Rene Otto, uh, and his team met with our, our team and we went through at least three important questions. The first was precisely the issue of the email and they gave an undertaking that uh, they accept our objection that it is not enough to uh, investigate themselves. They needed to have an independent investigator and they have uh, started that process and they will share with us the outcomes of the uh, independent audits that will look into the emails themselves. Company CEO Rene Otto met the movement and affirmed that the company will be working with BLF to find solutions for the alleged racism reports within the company. I think it was a very constructive meeting. I think uh, I agree with the summary that Andile gave here. Um, I want to make it very clear. The one thing he felt is that we, didn't, we haven't come out strong enough, that we are anti-racism, that we are very much against racism. Um, and I want to make that point very strong. I felt that it wasn't necessary to make the point. But if, if, if we have to say that, we will say that, because that is the case. Uh, we are a truly South African company, we believe in the Rainbow Nation, we believe we are all here to, to, to make a future for ourselves and our children and our grandchildren and we have to make it work. The only thing I, that I disagree with is the definition of theft, but you know, it's, uh, I agree with the point that our board is, is, is not uh, transformed enough and we will see the progress in six months time and hopefully the, 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 definition of, the definition of theft will then become softer. Autos say they are tracing the source of the fake email content and that they are considering taking legal actions against those behind it. My way CEO Rene Otto has accepted the deadline set by the BLF that the movement is giving My Way six months to bring about transformation in sport. This comes after the BLF said there is racism in the company. Nobesutia Jana, Centurion. Joining us live in studio is Mr. Rene Otto, Midway, uh, my way, I beg your pardon, CEO, and Eddie K. Bafour is a, a founder of Sir Brainy Holdings ITC. Zanele Luane, Luana is Deputy National Convener of Black First and Land First. We'll start in studio. Good evening to you, Mr. Otto. Good and evening, thanks so much Sydney. for your time. I'm sure in your, in your wildest dreams, when you started the company nine years or so ago, you had never anticipated that uh, this would happen. What, what has been the impact? Uh, not only on staff morale, but just on the brand my way um, since this incident? I think ironically, um, if I have to measure the impact in terms of policies cancelled, it was very small. Um, 
It's less than 10 policies today. So we're very grateful for that. And hopefully it's because people do listen to our side of the story before they make up their minds. Um, when it comes to staff morale, I think the staff morale is stronger than ever because people are pulling together and they're saying we'll get through this. It's unfair what's happened. We're a victim of, of a fake email. But we'll, we'll stand together and we'll work together. Um, just for interest sake, we employ 80%, 79% of our, of our employees are black. And, you know, we've, we've built this business over nine years. We employ almost 1,600 people. And, and really, we, um, we've, we're proud of what we've achieved. We, we're not saying we're perfect and we're on a road. But um, I think we've got a lot going for us as well. So what has been the unintended consequences of uh, this email uh, purporting that, you, you know, uh, officials will cancel 90% of black clients' policies or claims and calling them baboons? What have been the unintended consequences in your view? Well, I think the consequences were, with respect, very intended. I think there was a real intention to, to hurt the brand of my way. And, and uh, you know, I, I have to accept that... Um, Certainly at some stage yesterday, uh, if we didn't respond and put our side of the story out uh, as quickly as we did and give, give people two sides of the story, I think the damage would have been big. But as I say, the, if I measure the, the damage in terms of policies cancelled, it hasn't been that big. Mm. You, you mentioned that you, you, your staff complement is at least 70, 80 percent African black or black. No, yeah, it's 79 percent black, it's 60 percent African black. Okay. And, and do you think now with this email there's more scrutiny in terms of the higher echelons of my way and what your equity or rather management structures, uh, uh, the, the competence of, yeah. of whether that is, is, is transformed or not? Yeah, I think there's more scrutiny. We, we've been, especially over the last two, three years, um, as I explained this afternoon to the BLF guys, the last four appointments I've made to my senior management team were, were African black. So, so I think we, we are using the opportunities when vacancies um, come about. Um, we realize we're on a journey. We're not perfect. We're not where we want to be. But, you know, we're also making progress. And we set targets every year. And, the, and, and if we, you know, the target for next year will be tougher than the target for this year. So the target for this year is, is to get to 82%. We're sitting at 79 So we've got six months to, to close that gap. And then next year we'll, we'll, we'll set a higher target. Mm. target. Okay, we also have Eddie Buff, a founder of Sir Brainy Holdings ITC. Good evening to you and thanks so much for your time. Just a, a perspective from you in terms of this racist email that has now uh, clearly tarnished the brand of my way. They, they need to do some damage control, uh, albeit that their CEO is more charitable or optimistic. Eddie, what's your view? Um, so maybe just to, you know, really start on the point that um, it's quite unfortunate that... Um, my way is, you know, become um, the victim of this. Whether true or not, um, I'm not really going to go into that. I'm not going to delve into that. But I think um, I would rather want to look at the bigger picture of it. And the bigger picture is that, you know, racism is like a fever that is really plaguing society. You know, and why do you think lots of people are so interested in this, you know, in this very topic? People are interested in it because racism is something that exists. As much as we all want to, you know, um, usually push it under the carpet and pretend, you know, and pretend as if it doesn't exist, mm -hmm. it really exists. And I think you really need to face it head on. And um, suppressing the symptoms does not cure the disease. But curing the disease definitely eliminates the symptoms. And maybe, you know, um, with, my, with my spiritual point of view as a Baha'i, I would like to really, you know, say that I'm very convinced that the disease from which society currently suffers is failure to recognize the principle of the oneness of humanity. And racism is just by the, um, you know, just by the symptoms of it. Yeah, but, but is there you, a way, yeah. sorry, sorry, Eddie, is there a way that companies can mitigate uh, you know, especially if a disgruntled client then goes, alleged uh, client in this case, um, goes on this particular route uh, to express their frustration. Is there a way that companies can protect themselves from such? Um, so maybe first of all, um, even before we talk about companies protecting themselves, I think the 
uh, companies should start from the basic from the basic grassroots of you know what are they doing to make sure that you know there is um, you know there's equality um, in the in the company itself in the in the working environment and all that so that you know when these things start coming up you know it's actually um, the the previously underprivileged or the previously um, the previously oppressed mm-hmm. individuals in the company are the ones who are even going to rise up and say no this is not true this is our experience there. So far, with all the um, with all the drama going around, I haven't really seen, you know, any any bold individuals from my way, you know, in coming out to say that, oh, actually, you know, we are black people or we are previously oppressed people. You work in my way, and we don't think my way is actually um, is actually you know a racist company. I'm not saying they are, but I think you know um, perhaps this might be a wake up call for them to see, you know, what can we do more. To say that you know when these things happen, you know our people here are even going to be the ones who are going to stand up to say no, 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 guys, excuse me, you know um, we are in here and we're not experiencing that. So, All right, Eddie. Like sorry, said, Eddie. Yeah. Just stay on the line. We take calls on 061-877-1357. The number is on the screen. 061-877-1357. Zanele Luana is deputy convener of Land First, uh, Black First, Land First. Uh, good evening to you, Zanele, and thanks so much for joining us. Uh, Mr. Otto here says that you had a fruitful meeting and that he's satisfied with the way going forward. Your view. Hello, Cindy, and good evening to your listeners, and thank you for having me tonight. As you would have seen on media, we had took a decision as BLF to go and pay a visit to My Way Insurance Company as a result of the leaked email that was circulating all over media today. And we had really just three things we wanted clarity on. The first thing was on the emails, because as you would know, the CEO of the company has said that the email is fake according to their own investigations. So the first question or our point of alarm as a movement that fights against racism was to say there there are claims against the company and the company is investigating itself against racism. And we clearly put it out that this is a clearly biased process. Then the CEO had informed us as BLF that they are also conducting an independent investigation process and if we are not satisfied with that, we can do that with our own investigators, and we agreed on that. But what was very interesting around the fake email story, because you, we must also know that the issue of emails and how emails currently in society, this is about the Gupta leaks, how they are used to tarnish the reputations of black people is very important and it's very worrying in society because here is a white company saying the email is fake and white racist media accepts that. And when the Gupta family says the email are fake, when our president, for example, Andile, was implicated on the email, says the email are fake, the media does not listen to that and run with their own narrative. All right, so Zanella, please stay on the line. I, yeah, I hate to interrupt you. Sipo, good evening to you. We have our first caller. Uh, what's, your, what's your comment or question? Well, my comment is that, uh, you know, uh, the fact that these incidents are cropping up uh, quite constantly uh, indicates that uh, racism is real in this country. And there is no point in denying it, you know, with diplomatic, uh, intellectual or academic terms and all of that, you know. We need to have a, a, a very serious dialogue on how we deal with these issues rather than dealing with uh, symptoms and uh, damage control and spin doctoring and so on. Because this is for real and it's keeping uh, black people, you know, uh, very unhappy uh, in a situation where uh, as black, as in fact, as indigenous African people, we feel that we don't actually have space to express our issues. And when we do, we are having all these spin doctorings rather than dealing with the real issues on the ground where people where racism impacts uh, very negative on our 
you know. Sipo, thanks, thanks so much uh, for your call, 061-877-1357, 1357 Mr. Otto, your, your response that this is, in a way, a blessing in disguise to give us an opportunity to talk about the polarized situation that we find ourselves in a, as a country, and, and maybe that uh, as organizational part of organizational transformation is to look at whether uh, co-workers of different creeds and origin feel like they belong, that they, they're all equal. What's, what's your view in terms of how no, you I actually that? I actually agree with that point. I think the bigger debate here is the racism, the divide that we experience, we can call it between white and black or white monopoly capital and black Twitter or whatever the case is, it's just very unhealthy. And in my looking at this case, the, the easy part is to solve the, the, the fake email, is to take steps. Uh, we've met this afternoon with our, with our lawyers, our, our case is very strong, but that doesn't solve the deeper problem that, that SIPO has now mentioned. And what I'm grappling with is how can we, now that we are in the spotlight, and, and we, we absolutely deny that this, and we will prove, that this email originated from my way. Um, but now that we're in the spotlight, how, we, how do we take the opportunity to look at, and I, I ask myself, what would Nelson Mandela have done? What, what, is, the, what, is, the, what is the reconciliatory uh, solution? It's not an easy question. But I do ask myself that, and, and I would be much more satisfied if we can, in the process, um, create an outcome where we move closer to each other rather than just we take the person to, to court, we win the case, and, and, and so what. We haven't really solved. There's clearly an aggrieved individual on the other side, very aggrieved. I want to sit across the table and understand he's, 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 he's hurt, and I want to understand his behavior. Not, and I'm, and I'm, I'm really... Uh, not from, a, um, from, from actually putting myself in his shoes and understand what, what happens in your life that you actually go out of your way to not only damage a, a company's reputation, but the two individuals mentioned in the email. Now, they're now in the spotlight. They, they get hate mail. They get uh, targeted. And I think it's, uh, on the one hand, it angers one, but on the other hand, I also want to understand the behavior of, of this specific individual. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we've got heightened senses when it comes to fake news um, just in, in, in recent months uh, in terms of the <clears throat> necessity to corroborate and uh, check the veracity of any particular news. So one would ask, in the nine years of your existence, you must have processed millions of claims, and you may have uh, declined millions of claims equally of uh, different clients, be it uh, black, white, or what have you. What would drive this particular client to react the way they have, uh, just based on, on a claim being? You know, um, I wouldn't know, because this, this claim went through three stages. The normal processing of the claim, we felt it was invalid, we informed the client. We also then told him he's got the right to approach our disputes department, who is not the claims department, it's a separate department. They look at it with a fresh eye to see if, if they agree with the decision. That process was followed. The disputes department agreed with the original decision. Then we informed the client he's also got the right to go to the ombudsman for short-term insurance, which he then did. And a week ago, the ombudsman ruled in our favor. So clearly the client feels aggrieved, no matter what forum makes a decision. Where I sit as a CEO, I can't I can't find fault with a, with a claim that went through the ombudsman. So I have to accept that our decision was fair, and, and, but, but and I I'm can't answer sorry. the question yeah. about, about what makes this client act like this, and that's why I'm saying I, I would really like to, to understand Yeah, But to even side. get to a point where it says this is an executive decision to decline 90% of black claims because they're baboons or whatever it is, and it uh, would save the company money, why, why would – has that your relationship been so – hostile and uh, that this client would want to make these claims sure you know I've <laughs> it so happens that my way has got the best track record with the ombudsman you can check it it's an objective fact you can and I'm, I'm talking about large insurance companies there's, there's one small insurance company that's got a better track record than my way but we are there's at least 40 companies and we are either the second best of all companies or the best of the large companies which means when we repudiate a claim the ombudsman agrees with our decision more than with any other insurance company. What more can I expect of my team? 
than to, to have statistics that prove that we are fair when we make a decision not to pay a claim. Okay, but the question from BLF saying that if you investigate yourself, it's likely to be biased. Um, so how do we know then no. the, the, the outcome thereof? I, we agreed with them, and that's why we're busy with... with look, the first step was to look at... Our, to get my own IT people to look and tell me is that where does this mail come from. So that's the, the investigating ourselves. That's just, I mean, that's the first thing that any company will do. Did, is something wrong here? Is it real? Is there a problem? The feedback is no, it's fake, and we can prove it. So we met this afternoon with a professional, independent forensic expert who will now go through a process, and he promised us by Tuesday he will have finished his process. So we will have his report by Tuesday. We will publish it on our website because I don't exactly, for the reason I don't want to be in a situation where people say, yeah, but that's what you say. You're just covering up. So we will publish the report and then we'll invite anyone, and that's what I said to BLF, if they feel they have their own. Because, I mean, this is still, it's independent, but it's somebody that we chose. So if you want to choose somebody else, you're welcome. Our doors are open. Mm -hmm. We've got nothing to hide. All right, let's uh, take a call. Joel, good evening to you. Calling us from Pumalanga. How good are you? Good evening, ma'am. You are speaking to Joel Ledwaba yes, sir. in Pumalanga, in a town known as Leidenberg in Mashishini. Welcome. Ma'am, we are more than 20, 30 people. We are victims of my way, including myself and my family. My way is a racist black insurance company that still treats black people like baboons. And I encourage black people who have got, who are contacted to my way and said, black people, you are playing with fire. Please, in your big numbers, withdraw your contract. Man, my thing was repudiated before people could even launch investigations, number one. Number two, the assessor on behalf of my way had to bribe people and buy drinks and beers and all like. And number three, ma'am, on record, these people have got a deep connection with the ombudsman of the Republic of South Africa. The manner in which the ombudsman conducts the investigations with its short-term insurance companies must be investigated by the public protector. All right. I say, yeah. Sorry, yes. sorry, Joe. I mean, it sounds really detailed and uh, quite serious allegations you're making. What steps have you made personally uh, beyond the ombudsman? Uh, I'm not sure what the process would be or the protocol. Where do you go beyond the ombudsman? I encourage black people who are contacted to my way, please cancel yourself and look for other companies. I will tell you, they preempted, they are preempting decisions before they could even uh, launch their investigations. All right, Joe, we will get the details and please get in, uh, in touch with our producers as well so we get the merits of your case. Yes, Mr. Otto. I, I would like him to get in, in, in contact with me. I mean, he can send me an email and, and, and I would like to look at his case. Mm. I mean, it, I can hear that he's hurt. I can hear that he's unhappy. Um, I'm not aware that he's ever approached me. I'm very approachable. I get, often get clients writing emails directly to me, and, and I would welcome that. Mm. So, so would you say this is opening up or giving people an opportunity to express their frustration with your company? Had this not happened, yeah. we would not have heard the voice of the Joels, because you yourself, by your own admission, said your company is not perfect. No, of course we're not perfect. Um, but as I say, if people are unhappy with us, who have the lowest overturn rate, then... You know, the average of the industry is 26%, and in, in my ways is 76 So we are by far the fairest of all the insurance companies. So I would, I would, I would hate to know how our clients of other insurance companies feel. I, I'm, not, I'm not disputing the merits of this individual's case. But if I look at statistically, um, I mean, I can't look at every claim myself. So I look at things like Hello Peter. There's a website called Hello Peter. You will see that MyWay gets more compliments than any other insurance company. Mm. I got stats today. I asked for, for, for people to, to actually, and it's difficult because, I mean, you have to go on whether a surna surname looks like a black person and, and, and count, and you will make mistakes because it's not 100% accurate. But 63% of all compliments that MyWay have received in the last six months came from black people or people with surnames that, that seems to be black. So... I, I battle to, to accept that we're a racist company. Um, I'm not saying there aren't individual cases with merits, and I would personally like to, to 
you know, to, to look at them and get involved in them. But, you know, um, there are institutions like the Ombudsman. And, I mean, I, I think it's a, it's a very serious statement to say the Ombudsman is, is, is not, you know, there's a problem with the Ombudsman. Um, I can't comment on that, but, you know, that would, that would have an impact on the whole industry. Okay. And we know that uh, sitting in the high echelons of power, the CEO may not necessarily know every detail or interaction that clients have with your staff members. So going forward, if there are any other claims now that uh, this matter is in the public domain, do they go to you? Do you? Have you set up another department to deal with complaints? No, we have a disputes department, which is not the claims department. So I wouldn't want another dispute department. But... Everyone in my way knows if a client says, give me the CEO's email address, I want to send him an email, they must give my email address. That's an instruction from my side. I'm available. I'm probably, I mean, I'm available for staff and clients. That's my first priority. I'm not so busy in other meetings that I'm not available. So I will look at every complaint myself. Um, I have a legal background myself. I've been in this industry for 30 years. I'm not saying I can make a better decision than an ombudsman or that my claims people. But I've had cases, and, and it is the minority. But from people approaching me, where maybe 10% of the case, I actually think that we could have done, handled it better, yeah. and, and I actually make a different decision. And has this affected you personally, outside your role as the CEO? In what way? As an individual, living in South Africa, knowing the dynamics. That You're talking about this last two days. Correct. It's actually energized me. I think it's, it's giving my way an, an opportunity to say, please go and consult the objective evidence, like the Ombudsman stats, like the Hello Peter websites, um, like the many compliments. I mean, I saw compliments today. We, we copy, we send them to everyone in the company. And the majority of the people that gave us compliments are black people. So um, I, I think uh, um, we will never be perfect. It's a, it's a people business. It's not computers. So people make mistakes. Um, and I'll never claim to be perfect. But what I will say is, based on objective facts, we are, prob we are fairer than, I would say, all other insurance companies. All right, Mr. Otto, thanks indeed for your time. Uh, that's Rene Otto, my way CEO and studio. Uh, and on the line, Eddie Bafour, uh, founder of Sir Brainy Holdings ITC.